Hello and thanks for watching. In this installment of our basic concepts in commercial real estate series, I'll be covering the income approach, one of three real estate appraisal methods for estimating the value of real property. Now, if you'd like to follow along and you're watching this on YouTube or Vimeo, in the comments section below, you'll find a link to download the Excel workbook that I'm using here. If you're watching this on the post on adventuresincre.com, in that same post, you'll likewise find a link to download this workbook. So let's go get started. Down here in the tab ribbon, you'll click on income approach, and you'll find here that I've set up a basic operating statement off to the left. That's my operating statement for my underwriting versus this operating statement provided to us by the broker or by the seller that tells us what the history of the property has been. Now the income approach is a method for valuing real estate in which we take the net operating income of a property that's fully stabilized and we divide that by some capitalization rate generally determined by the market and the resulting value is what we estimate the property to be worth. As a result, this approach is generally only used with income producing properties that are either fully stabilized or that we can come up with some stabilized value. And I say stabilized, meaning the property is fully operational, earning income commensurate with the market, and that is likely to continue to produce at this current level into perpetuity. Because of this, there's a couple things to keep in mind. Number one, Never take an unstabilized net operating income and capitalize that. You'll get an erroneous value. The second thing is your net operating income is highly sensitive to changes in income and expenses. And so your value as a real estate professional is your ability to use appropriate assumptions, both income and expense, to arrive at a realistic net operating income. Your value also comes in your ability to determine an appropriate capitalization rate for this particular property based on comparable sales, based on the condition of the property, the market, etc. So with that, let's get started. I'll, I'll just show you how I value this hypothetical property here. Now what I did is I have this history off to the right and you'll notice my operating statement and the nomenclature I use for my categories differ from this operating statement. And that is common. You'll receive something from the broker. It looks totally different than the model that you use. And the first thing you'll do is you'll transpose their numbers and their categories to fit yours. And that's what I've done. And you'll notice that especially in my common area maintenance operating expense line item. Line item. Here in the broker's operating statement, they have maintenance and security. Those have been wrapped up into one on my side. Nonetheless, you'll notice the net operating income is the same except for a rounding difference, but essentially the same between their 2015 and my 2015. Now I'm assuming my performance is for 2016. I'm at the end of 2015 right now. I'm assuming or I'm asking myself what is going to happen at this property over the next 12 months. And that's the most common approach when, when dealing with the income approach is to consider your net operating income over the next 12 months. But that's not always the case. Some real estate professionals will use the trailing 12 months. Some will derive some pro forma based on what they believe to be a future stabilized value, common in development, common in value add. When you have a property that's not fully stabilized, they say at X point into the future, this is what I believe the stabilized performer will look like. So here I have the history, I've dropped it in. I'm going to build my pro forma out. First, by looking at rent. Okay, well, over the next 12 months, what is my rent going to look like? Well, I'm just going to assume it's going to grow by 3%. So I grow these by three, each one of my tenants by 3% to arrive at a base rental income over the next 12 months of approximately 375,000. Then I have reimbursement. Now reimbursement is income where your tenants reimburse you, the landlord, for a certain portion of operating expenses incurred in operating the property. And before I come up with a reimbursement number for my pro forma, what I want to understand first is, you know, historically, what percentage of total operating expenses is being recovered? 
And I can just do a simple calculation here. I'll take 2015, divide that by total operating expenses. And I see that roughly 60% of the total operating expenses was, were recovered in 2015. I'm going to assume that that will be the case for my Performa. And so before I drop this in, right, I, wanna, I want to understand or, or make some assumptions for operating expenses. So I'm just going to take each one of my expense items, I'm going to grow those by 3%. And now I have my operating expense numbers, 81,545 roughly. I can then calculate my reimbursement as 60% of that 81,000 or 48,927. Next, last but not least, my other income, grow that by 3%. And now I have my income to effective gross income. Oh, uh, I forgot my general vacancy. Uh, right now I'm assuming 10%. I'm going to change that to 12% to match something closer to the history. Again, my expenses are done and I arrive at a net operating income of 294,000, approximately 10,000 greater than uh, the previous year. I think that's appropriate. Last, I need to determine a cap rate. So I go, I find a handful of sales comps, comparable properties that have sold in the last 12 to 18 months, similar year, similar property type, in the same submarket or approximately in the same submarket. And on average, those sales comparables have been trading at about a 6% cap rate, meaning the sales price uh, was, oh, I'm sorry, the net operating income was roughly 6% of the sales price of each one of those properties. And so I take that 6% and the net operating income, and the formula is net operating income divided by cap rate, and I arrive at my estimated value of 4.9 million. Now, what do I do with this? Well, if I'm a buyer, potentially that's what I pay for the property. If I'm a seller, that's what I hope to get for the property. If I'm a lender, that's the value that I could use to base my loan amount on. So if I wanna lend 70% of the value, that would be the value that I'd lend 70% on. If I already own the property and I want to report to my investors or otherwise, that would might be what I would estimate the value of this property to be. There, there's a lot of reasons why we would use the income approach, ultimately to come to some value that we then uh, can act on. And so with that, that's the income approach. If you have questions, feel free to reach out and thanks for your time.